Drowning in dense research papers? Deep Dive is where two AIs break down academic and market research, so you don't have to. From quant finance to AI policy to economic models, we translate it, explain it, and deliver what matters. Like, share, subscribe, knowledge should be accessible, not locked in PDFs. Fresh AI insights delivered regularly. Today we're taking a serious look at a place where two huge global forces collide, artificial intelligence and climate finance. A really critical intersection right now. Specifically, we're diving into how AI is being used to try and solve a surprisingly messy, uh, vital problem. Yeah. Tracking money meant for early warning systems. Our source today is a research paper, AI for Climate Finance, Agentic Retrieval and Multi-Step Reasoning for Early Warning System Investments. Quite a title. It is, but this deep dive is essentially your shortcut to understanding what they found. The big challenges in tracking these funds, the um, really innovative AI solution they build, and some pretty eye-opening results. It could really point towards more transparency. So our mission is clear. Mm. Unpack the research, get into the guts of it, reveal its power, and show you why this isn't just some academic thing. Right, because these early warning systems, you know, alerts for floods, storms, heat waves, they're absolutely non-negotiable for climate resilience. They save lives, protect livelihoods, prevent huge economic damage. Exactly. And the UN has this major goal, early warnings for all, aiming for universal coverage by 2027. It's ambitious, but crucial. And the economics make sense too, right? Every dollar invested saves way more down the line. Oh, absolutely. Studies suggest every $1 invested saves up to $10 in avoided losses. It's widely seen as a cost-effective, essential, no regret, climate adaptation measure. You just do it. And no regret investment. Precisely. The evidence is overwhelming that investing here is smart, both from a human and a financial perspective. Foundational stuff. Right. So given how vital and frankly sensible these systems are, you'd think tracking the money flowing to them would be, well, simple, hmm. like a basic database job. You would think so. But the reality, as this paper digs into, is just much, much messier. So why? Why is tracking investments in something so obviously important so incredibly hard? Where's the money trail hiding? Yeah, that's the core problem the paper tackles. And the difficulty really comes down to how these big players, multilateral development banks, MDBs, and specific climate funds like the CRWS fund, they studied how they actually report on what they're funding. It's not clean. Not at all. Yeah. There's a real lack of standardized reporting structures. Um, consistent terminology across these different bodies. So one bank calls it X, another calls something similar Y. Exactly that. One might say Hydromet Services, another weather forecasting upgrade, same underlying goal, different labels. And then the reports themselves are these complex beasts. You get some structured data, sure, tables with numbers. The budget lines. Right. But often the crucial detail is what that money is actually for which bit of the early warning system it supports that's buried deep in paragraphs of dense, unstructured text, project descriptions, narrative sections. Okay, so you might see, well, technical assistance, $2 million, but you have to wade through pages of text to figure out if that's for, say, training forecasters or buying sensors. Precisely. And because of that inconsistent language modernization, capacity building, early action protocols, you named it the old ways of tracking, like simple keyword searches or rigid data templates, they just they fail. They can't reliably pick out these EWS investments across loads of different documents. And doing it manually. Forget it. Well, it's incredibly slow. You need real experts to interpret the jargon in the context. And it's just not practical at the scale you need for something like the UN's Early Warnings for All initiative. That demands transparency. You need to know where the money's going. Okay, so complex data, inconsistent language, high stakes. Yeah. Sounds like a job for AI. Exactly. And this paper proposes a system the ew 4 all Financial Tracking AI Assistant. How does this AI try to cut through all that mess? So what they've built is an LLM-based agentic AI system. The specific goal is automating that process, finding and classifying the EWS investments hidden inside these diverse MDB reports. Agentic AI, we share that term floating around. What makes it agentic here? Is it just like doing one task really well, or is there more to it? It's definitely more. Agentic means it's designed to act more like, well, an agent, an analyst almost. Mm -hmm. It performs a sequence of actions, processing information, fetching relevant context, applying reasoning steps rather than just making a single prediction. Okay, so it's thinking it through. Kind of, yeah. 
Key features are its ability to handle multimodal data. That means it looks at the text and the tables together, understanding the connections. Ah, so it doesn't just read the words, it sees the numbers in the table next to them relate. Exactly, and it's built to be flexible, to adapt to those different reporting styles we talked about. A big part of its smarts comes from integrating techniques like multi-step reasoning, sometimes called chain of thought, or Cato and retrieval augmented generation, RA. Okay, RA and Kati. Big buzzwords in AI right now. Break that down for us. How do they help this AI specifically with tracking EWS money in these messy documents? Okay, think of it like this. RG means the AI isn't just working off its general knowledge learned during training. Before it tries to classify an investment, it first intelligently goes and retrieves the most relevant snippets of information directly from the document it's looking at. Finding the evidence first. Exactly. The specific sentences, paragraphs, table rows that seem relevant to funding or project activities. Then, Gorgi is like the AI showing its work. It breaks down the complex job, like classifying which EWS pillar the money goes to into smaller, logical steps. Like, okay, found a dollar amount here. Now, what activity is mentioned nearby? Does that activity match the definition of, say, morning dissemination? Precisely that kind of step-by-step -step process. It explains its reasoning as it goes. And combining RGD lets the agent work iteratively. It finds context, reasons about it, maybe finds more context, reasons again, until it can confidently link the funding, the activity, and the right EWS pillar, even if the info is scattered or uses weird terms. And that helps humans check its work later. Yes. It's designed for better explainability so experts can follow the logic and validate the outcome. Mm -hmm. Much better than a black box. Okay, let's really unpack the how. How does this AI take a complicated, maybe slightly chaotic PDF report and turn it into clear, structured data about EWS investments? Walk us through the basic pipeline. Sure. So it starts with parsing. Simple mm -hmm. enough, the system takes the PDF, pulls out all the content, separates the text blocks, identifies the tables, gets the raw ingredients. Right, just extracting it all first. What's next? Then comes a clever step, augmentation. For each chunk, it extracted maybe a paragraph, maybe a table. It generates a quick, like, two-sentence summary. This summary explains what's in that chunk and how it fits into the overall document. Get little context notes for itself. Exactly. It helps disambiguate later on. Then, all this augmented content, plus metadata like page numbers, gets stored in a vector database. Now, when the AI needs to find info about EWS investments... It queries this database instead of rereading the whole PDF. Precisely. It uses smart queries in the retrieval step. And this is where they use that technique called hybrid retrieval via rank fusion. Okay, hybrid retrieval, meaning... Meaning it doesn't rely on just one type of search. It combines two powerful methods. Semantic search, which is great at understanding the meaning or concept, even if the exact words aren't there. Like searching for telling people about floods and finding text about disseminating hydrometeorological warnings. Exactly. And it combines that with traditional keyword search, which is still crucial for finding very specific things like acronyms, currency codes, or exact project names, especially in tables. Rank Fusion then intelligently merges the results from both searches. Best of both worlds. To get the most relevant pieces of information related to funding amounts and those five key EWS pillars. Right, the pillars. Just quickly remind us, what are they? Yeah, the internationally agreed components, disaster risk knowledge, understanding the hazards, detection and monitoring, observing and forecasting, warning dissemination and communication, getting the message out, preparedness and response capabilities, making sure people know what to do, and finally, cross-pillar foundational elements, things like governance, funding mechanisms, coordination. Got it. So the AI retrieves bits related to funding for any of those five. Yes. Then the final big step is classification and allocation. Using the info it retrieved and applying that multi-step chain of thought reasoning, the AI figures out what the money is for, classifies it against those pillars, and extracts the actual amount allocated. Okay, now here's where it gets really juicy. They didn't just build this thing in isolation. They tested it against other AI methods, right? On real documents from the series fund. What happened? How did their agent systems stack up? They did. They took 25 actual MDB project documents funded via C or W abuse complex real-world stuff. And they compare their agent-based RAG approach against several other methods. Things like a basic zero-shot LLM, just asking the LLM directly, with no examples. Few-shot learning, where you give it a couple of examples. A fine-tuned transformer model, specifically trained on similar tasks. 
and even a few-shot method that did use chain of thought but lacked that iterative retrieval component of the agent. And the results? Was the agent, like, marginally better or...? Oh, it was significantly better. The agent-based approach was the clear winner. It just handled the complexity much more effectively than any of the others. How much better? Give us the numbers. We need the data. Okay, okay. For their agent method, they reported really strong performance metrics. 87% accuracy. 87% overall accuracy? That's high for this kind of unstructured data. It is. And 89% precision. Meaning, when it said something was EWS funding, it was right 89% of the time. Very few false alarms. Exactly. And 83% recall. So it found 83% of the actual EWS investments that were hidden in the documents. Pretty good at not missing things. Right. Those are solid numbers for this task, hmm. especially when you compare. How do the others do? That few shot with chain of thought, for instance. That method, the next best, only hit 51% accuracy. 51 versus 87. Wow. Yeah. The paper explicitly quantifies it. They claim their agent method delivers a 23% improvement in the F1 score, which balances precision and recall compared to more traditional NLP techniques they tested. 23% improvement. That's not just tweaking. That's a fundamental difference in capability. It really is. It strongly suggests that for these kinds of tasks, messy documents, inconsistent terms, needing to connect scattered info, you need that extra layer of agentic intelligence. The iterative retrieval and reasoning is what makes it work so much better. It cuts through the noise in a way that others just couldn't. That seems to be the key takeaway from the comparison. Okay, so the AI works remarkably well. It can find and classify this EWS money much more accurately than before. Why does that actually matter? What are the real-world ripple effects for climate finance for these EWS projects? The implications are pretty significant. I mean, first and foremost, it dramatically improves transparency and accountability. Instead of just relying on vague, high-level project summaries, you could potentially use this to get detailed, evidence-backed insights. Like, you can actually see the AI pinpointing the text or table row that justifies classifying X million dollars under detection and monitoring. Exactly. Linked right back to the source. This level of detail gives policymakers, fund managers, researchers much, much better data for making decisions. How so? Well, you can see where the money's really going. Are certain pillars underfunded across the board? Are specific regions getting less support for preparedness? Are investments truly aligned with the big goals, like the UN's early warnings for all? This tool could help answer those questions with actual data. Right. It moves from assumption to evidence. And that directly supports making those no-regret investments even more effective. If you can track the money accurately, you can manage it better, target gaps, and ensure it's really building resilience and saving lives. Maximizing the impact of every dollar. That's the goal. Plus, the paper itself is a contribution they're releasing, the benchmark data set and the expert annotated documents they created. That's a valuable resource for anyone else working on AI for climate finance. It pushes the whole field forward. It sounds incredibly promising, achieved impressive accuracy where others struggled. But, you know, no system is perfect. What limitations or uh, potential pitfalls does the paper itself acknowledge? Yeah, they're quite upfront about the challenges. Firstly, the AI is only as good as the reports it reads. If the original document is incomplete, deliberately vague, or just poorly written, the AI might struggle or inherit those issues. Garbage in, garbage out still applies to some degree. To some degree, yes. Second, while they used expert annotations, there's always a risk of bias creeping in. The way the AI classifies things could be subtly influenced by the patterns in its training data or the specific prompts used if it encounters a totally new type of project or reporting style. It might misinterpret it based on what it's seen before. Potentially. Yeah. That needs ongoing monitoring. Third, its success here is on EWS investments in MDB reports. How well it generalizes to, say, tracking adaptation finance and agriculture or renewable energy funding from different sources that needs more testing. You can't just assume it works everywhere. Right. Context matters. Definitely. And probably the biggest hurdle for real-world impact isn't the tech itself, but adoption. Getting these big institutions to actually integrate such a tool into their workflows, to trust it, to use its outputs to inform policy, that's a whole other challenge. Absolutely. Technology is only one part of the equation. And what about ethics? Mm -hmm. AI, finance, global development, sensitive combination. How did they approach that? They addressed several key ethical points. A big one was relying on that rigorous expert human annotation from world meteorological organization specialists. That grounds the AI's learning in real-world expertise. Human validation from the start. Yes. And crucially, they stress this is an assistive tool. 
It's meant to support human analysts, make their job easier and faster, and not replace them entirely. Expert oversight, especially for tricky cases, remains vital. Keeping humans in the loop. Essential. They also confirmed they only use publicly available documents, CC licensed stuff, so no private or sensitive data was involved. And importantly, for transparency and responsible use, they're open sourcing their code and the data set. So others can check their work, build on it, potentially find flaws. Exactly. Promotes trust and further development. Okay, let's pull this all together then. We've dug deep into this paper showing that AI, specifically this agentic type, combining smart retrieval with multi-step reasoning, isn't just theory for climate finance. It can actually get its hands dirty with the messy reality of financial reports for crucial investments like early warning systems. And achieve really remarkable accuracy doing its, what was it, 87% accuracy, 89% precision, 83% recall? Those were the numbers. A significant leap over older methods. Yeah, and that breakthrough offers a powerful way to boost transparency and accountability. Knowing where the money is actually going within these complex systems, pillar by pillar, that's the first step to making sure it has the biggest possible impact, building resilience, protecting communities. Absolutely. So that leaves us with a final thought for you, our listeners, to chew on. This study nailed down tracking for early warning systems, a clear no regret investment area. If AI can bring this kind of clarity and precision there, what other complex, critical areas could benefit? Hmm. Like other types of adaptation finance, mitigation projects, maybe even broader development aid. Exactly. Think about global health spending, education funding, infrastructure projects, areas where billions flow. But tracking the specifics can be just as challenging. If we could apply this kind of AI analysis, this deep dive capability across the board, what could we learn? What gaps might we find? And how much more impact could we potentially unlock if we could track every dollar with this kind of verified precision? It's a powerful question about the future of transparency and effectiveness. Something to think about. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive. Still here? Then you're not just scrolling. You're searching for substance. This isn't just another quant podcast. It's AI translating complexity into clarity. So smart ideas reach smart minds. Like, share, subscribe, join the thinkers. Skip the noise. Let's make research accessible together. Liked how that paper got decoded? We've spent 20 plus years turning machine learning and AI into real world tools, not just slide decks. Whether you want to implement a model, validate research, or build something from scratch, we can help. Explore our showcases to see it in action. Visit our site or contact us directly. Let's turn complex ideas into working intelligence together.